The purpose of this video is to draw attention to a dangerous undercurrent of racism, anti-Semitism, and outright fascism which has been growing within our ranks. We're going to point to where this could end up if we allow it to continue, and we're going to explain how to confront it effectively. During periods of severe economic hardship, war, and social instability, people have the tendency to look for someone to blame. Historically, the groups that are singled out as scapegoats are not chosen based on facts and evidence. They are chosen according to the prejudices and hatreds of that era. Race, religion, ethnic background, and immigrant status are obvious and convenient starting points. But as these sentiments gather political power, the list of enemies expands to include anyone and everyone who disagrees on any topic of significance. And the punishment for being different rapidly moves from insults to violence. Genocides and ethnic cleansings are expressions of this dark current. It would be a grave error to assume that humans have evolved out of this pattern, or that the conditions which give rise to these tendencies will never be in play again. The reality of the matter is that the global economic downturn that we're experiencing right now is already providing a breeding ground for fascist, racist, and outright neo-Nazi groups, and the internet has given them a vector to spread their ideologies. Unfortunately, many of these types have infiltrated libertarian, conservative, and conspiracy-oriented circles. All you have to do to verify this is to visit the comment section of virtually any article or video which talks about the banking and monetary system or government cover-ups and corruption. Even more unfortunate is the fact that there are certain media figures, and we won't mention any names here, which are taking advantage of those racist and xenophobic sentiments and helping them grow. Like any social phenomenon, racism operates on a spectrum, with soft-core insults about the intelligence of certain ethnic groups on one end and hardcore neo-Nazi rhetoric on the other. These are not, however, separate and distinct phenomena. One does not go from being a normal, open-minded member of society to being a fan of Adolf Hitler and Heinrich Himmler overnight. There's a transition. People become acclimated to racism gradually. Once they have become comfortable with the softer versions, more extreme ideologies then seem reasonable. So what exactly are we talking about here when we refer to the more extreme end of racism? Well, rather than discuss it in an abstract sense, let's look at a real example. This page is from a website that someone who was on my friends list on Facebook shared last week. We have blurred out the name of the website and the name of the author to avoid sending traffic their way. The article that this particular person shared contained what I would categorize as low-level anti-Semitism. However, upon exploring the site for a few minutes, I found their manifesto, and that's what we're looking at here. This manifesto starts by explaining how they believe that they will rise to power, and thereby be in a position to implement their politics. They don't call for the violent overthrow of the U.S. government, but rather they advocate taking advantage of its collapse to gain power. Essentially, it's the same strategy that Hitler used. Once in power, they state that they will, quote, immediately enact decisive measures to the end of establishing white racial homogeneity in the United States. U.S. armed forces will be deployed within the United States to deal with non-white immigrants. And those immigrants will, quote, be rounded up and interned in concentration camps until they can be shipped back to wherever they are from, end quote. Now, the rounding up of non-whites wouldn't be limited to first-generation immigrants. The African-American population of the U.S. will, quote, have the option of repatriation to Africa or movement to a geographical area within the United States that is allocated to them. So, basically, reservations like the Native Americans were herded into. The manifesto goes on to say that, quote, Blacks will not be permitted to possess firearms or deadly weapons of any kind until which point they are transferred to their own lands, as they have proven that peaceful coexistence is incompatible with their genetic nature. End quote. And, not surprisingly, they have plans for the Jews as well. Quote, All Jews will be forced to wear identifying markers, so as they will no longer be capable of their methods of deceit. Many of them will be interned in concentration camps until a colony which is to be regulated by an international body can be established for them. The end goal will be to have all Jews removed from North America, as well as the nations of our brothers in Europe and elsewhere. End quote. This line of thinking doesn't just apply to issues of race and immigration. They call for complete and total state control over media. Quote, all broadcast systems will be nationalized immediately, and the television will only be allowed to show nature documentaries, anything else which does not present a value system or value judgments, and was not produced by Jews, along with state-authorized news. Radio stations will play classical music along with gospel and folk music, which was not produced by Jews. End quote. Fascist stand sounds like a pretty happening place now, doesn't it? But wait, there's more! Quote, a council on positive media will be formed to make decisions about what can and cannot be consumed by the public at large. End quote. So basically, complete and total censorship. And this goes for the internet as well. Quote, Entertainment media on the internet will have a moratorium placed on it until we can come to a consensus on a way to regulate it. The internet service providers, which will have been nationalized, will be used to block significant amounts of content while not infringing on the communication capacity of individuals. End quote. How about religion? Don't worry, they've got an opinion about that too. Quote, Though destructive forms of religion, those devised and advocated by the Jews, will be crushed entirely, traditional religious practices will be encouraged by the state, with churches again taking a lead role in the organization of communities and the formation of community values. Churches which meet the doctrinal requirements of the state will be directly subsidized. So basically, a theocracy. What about crime? Well, these guys have an answer for that. 
Quote, anyone over the age of 25 caught manufacturing or distributing drugs will be executed. Anyone caught using drugs will be enrolled in a rehabilitation program before being sentenced to a minimum one year in a concentration camp. So if you get caught selling pot, that's a death sentence. If you get caught smoking a joint, one year in a concentration camp. Hey gays, well these guys have got the solution. Quote, homosexuality will once again be outlawed. And depending on the circumstance, be viewed as either a criminal offense to be punished by incarceration or death, or a mental illness to be treated by mental health professionals. These guys aren't joking here. They want to make this into a reality. They want hardcore fascism in America and Europe, and they understand that the political and economic instability that's headed our way will provide them with a window of opportunity. Now, you could say that this website is an extreme example, a lunatic fringe that has no chance of getting traction. And that might be true if it were not for the wide spectrum of hateful politics that leads up to this extreme. Historically, the first mistake that reasonable people make as fascistic ideologies begin to spread is to ignore them, or to be tolerant of its early forms. Tolerating softcore racism within a social group gives it the opportunity to become established in the culture, and this provides a support structure for more extreme elements to move in. Once the extreme elements are established and start reaching for political power, the danger becomes apparent. But at that point, it's too late. Fortunately, this time around, we have a chance to learn from the lessons of history and prevent it from repeating. However, to accomplish this is going to require an understanding of group psychology. A common mistake that many people make when facing destructive social trends like racism is to use a gentle approach, attempting to reason with them and to win them over. This doesn't work when dealing with crowds. Crowd psychology is fundamentally different than individual psychology. And questions regarding race inherently fall under crowd psychology because you're dealing with the group identity. The only way to stop this kind of ignorance from spreading within a group is to aggressively call these types out, to shame them publicly and to exclude them from your circle. Give them no quarter, make no compromises, show no tolerance, and be absolute and ruthless in your condemnation of them. Sound extreme? Yes, it's extreme, but that's what works. If for a moment you hesitate to unload on these characters, consider how they will treat you if they rise to power. We don't even have to speculate on this topic. Some of these people come right out and tell us how it'll be under the rule. For example, on this same site we were just looking at, they have a section regarding the members of the truth movement that they consider shills due to their refusal to demonize the Jewish people. Among them are Luke Rudkowski, Jason Burmis, Mike Ribeiro, and Webster Tarpley. For the crime of expressing opinions that this fascist disagrees with, he proclaims that they should be, quote, subject to criminal prosecution, and depending on the rulings of a fair and just court, either be executed for treason or interned in a concentration camp. End quote. Let that sink in for a moment. These people would literally kill you or throw you in a concentration camp for saying something that they don't like. That's where this ignorant, xenophobic crap leads. And every time you stand silent while someone targets an ethnic group, another race, or religion in your midst, you are facilitating their rise. It's up to each and every one of us to make it clear that this is not okay, that this will not be tolerated in our circle. That anyone who makes the mistake of attempting to spread these hateful ideologies will be shunned and ostracized by their peers. We don't need to accommodate racists. We don't need the ignorant fringe. We can afford to push them away, and in fact we must. Because if we don't, then we will be lumped together with them. And that is a recipe for disaster. For more videos like this, subscribe to Storm Clouds Gathering on YouTube. For updates, bonus content, and to influence future videos, follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash stormcloudsgathering. Our Twitter handle is Collapse Updates, and our website is stormcloudsgathering.com.